Welcome to the Nobody Guide to Life, where we provide tips and tools for personal growth, personal development, and your spiritual journey that you can use right now in your everyday life. I'm J.A. Plosker. Thank you for joining us. You can always find out more at nobodiesview.com, thenobodybible.com, or you can check us out at Twitter and Facebook at Nobody's View. Our show notes are at nobodiesview.com. And if you like what you hear, we'd welcome a subscription or a review. We'd appreciate it. So what do you think of when I say the word intuition? Do you, do you think about having an insight into a situation or a gut feeling? Or maybe you think about instincts, like having a parental instinct. When we say someone has intuition, we may be describing a person who just sort of gets it, gets us. Maybe you have a friend like that. Well, we're not always clear why or how they do what they do. We just know there's something about people like that, something, something we like to be around. Well, my guest today describes herself as an intuitive that loves to help people connect with the divine. And she says that what she has, her intuitive gift, is because of divine intervention. Polly Wyram is an intuitive coach who also provides intuitive readings, and her powerful narrative includes this statement. When a main focus of her life was taken away because of health reasons, her intuitive gifts surfaced so strongly, they changed her life overnight. I'm not sure what else I can add to that. So let's find out more from Polly. Welcome to the show, Polly. Thank you so much. And I just have to say, your voice is like mesmerizing. It's so oh, well. lovely. It feels <laughs> wonderful. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. You sound good, too. Thank you so much for, for coming and, and being a part of our show. So, you know, I think it's interesting, and I was just coincidentally thinking about, like, when I do readings and say somebody asks me is, you know, going to my Aunt Martha's funeral in Nevada, is that a good choice or not? It's, um, it, it, what I get, how I pick up a lot of the stuff that I do is a, is a feeling. So okay. it's almost like um, if, if it feels like, no, it's not a good choice, it's kind of like I feel like something closing down inside of me. And I'm like, nope, that's not a good choice. Or if something feels really good to me, it's like everything is open and I'm receiving. All right. So, so that, that kind of gets really to that first question of, of describing what an intuitive is. Now, I think a lot of listeners may have heard of psychics or clairvoyance or, or seen people like the Long Island Medium mm -hmm. on TV. How is what you do similar or different? How would you describe to someone who's never heard of an intuitive before what you do? Okay, that's a great question. And I think, you know, everybody, all intuitives and mediums or whatever, everybody is different. And, and so really what I do, I have a little bit of mediumship, you know, sometimes I can connect with people that have crossed over. But I think the biggest thing that I do is I pick, I, I tune into what's going on in your life energetically right now. So what I mean by that is maybe not not in your life, like you're sitting down eating macaroni and cheese, although sometimes I don't see that, um, but the life uh, that's beyond that. So maybe the stuff that you're worried about, or maybe the stuff, the challenges that are coming up, or maybe some of the things that you've, you've overcome, but you're kind of still bringing them along with you and you're not quite ready to let go of them. And that's the stuff that I pick up on. So I take a little piece of everything and we figure out a plan on how you can make life a little bit more peaceful and a little bit easier for you. Does that make sense? That's interesting because is, is this something that you can turn off or turn on? I can turn it on and off, but I'll tell you what, like if I'm, um, like if I'm stressed or I'm mad or something, it's already turned off. That's interesting. Yeah. It's not like I can turn it on. It's already, it's already turned off. Like I'm sure if I'm stressed or mad, I can be like, you know, please let me see. But it's turned off because I have to kind of be in that open, you know, be open to receiving. And, and quite frankly, just talking about it, say I'm just having a conversation like I am with you. As soon as I just talk about it, then I automatically start opening up more. Do you believe that it is divinely guided by, by other beings? Okay. Well, here's, I, I definitely believe that we each have spirit guides. We, we have this guidance, but here's something that I think, be, so one of the things that I do that I, I don't advertise a whole bunch on my website, but when I do large, larger group settings, I, I channel messages and I do put channel messages in my blogs and okay. that is coming from um, a higher vibration. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with the term vibration in terms of like energy. And so I, I receive messages from 
a higher vibration. And to me, it feels like it's a group entity. It's so it's almost like a higher consciousness of, of, you know, an evolved consciousness that shares these messages with me. And they're, it's also sharing the feelings with me. And if I do it in a group setting, then everybody has the ability to feel that feeling of love and that feeling of peace that comes through. Um, I'm the channel for it, but it kind of opens up the door for other people to experience that feeling, I'll say, of awe or wonder. And people, you know, some people will see um, colors. Some people um, hear, you know, ex experience things that, you know, sometimes it's just emotional clearing, but it's always there. There's the potential for change with that. And that's one of my favorite things to do. All right. So, so, on, so on the Nobody Guide to Life, we talk yeah. about tips and tools for personal growth, personal development, and your spiritual journey. So yeah. a question that comes to my mind that would seem to be perfect for this moment right here is, yeah. I mean, is this something that you think that you think everybody can do? I mean, does everybody have the capacity to be an intuitive? Here's what I think. I think, yes, we all have the capacity. You know, we come in designed to create. We come in, you know, so into this life form designed to create. And so we all, we're all going to create something unique and beautiful to us. And that shares our, our energy, the vibration that shares, you know, the essence of who we are. And that's what we're here to do. Uh, it's different for everybody. And we, when we are in that moment of living where we are creating, yes, we all do receive messages. We all receive guidance. It's, and it's not necessarily like, you know, there are going to be many people moving through life that are unaware that they are receiving guidance, but they just innately know what to do. Right. And, th and when we, that's being in the flow of life. Right. Well, that point you just made is, is, is really important. And I think that's something that, that's a question that I think, at least for me, preoccupies a lot of people that are on this journey of personal growth and spirituality is, am I really doing this alone or do I have a team behind me? And sometimes I think if we haven't met that team personally, yeah. that we tend to think we're alone. What do you tell people if, if they say that to you? I mean, if you believe that we have people guiding us or other vibrations or entities guiding us, how do you counsel people to get in touch with that if they're seeking that connection? Yeah. And, you know, I, I love that question because it really is, it's a question of faith, but one of, and, you know, for me, I found it, I mean, I guess I always believed it, but I really did find it with my health, health crisis, but I, you know, I strongly encourage people to pray or meditate, whatever they feel comfortable with. And, and then it's, you know, ask for guidance and just trust that it's going to happen. And then when it happens, like, you know, for, so I have, I work with people who want to not believe, like they <laughs> want their life to change, but they want to be like, I can't do this. This is crazy stuff. And for example, <laughs> one of them was, Oh, I mean, the stuff is just great. But like one time she was working on something and, and she's like, no, you're the, you're the only person, you know, she thinks that I'm the only person that can tell her answers. And I'm like, no, you can do this. And so she actually was doing her laundry and her, she had an earache or uh, two ear, I mean, something going on with her ears. And so she, she just said, okay, if you're really there, take away my ear pain. And like that, it was gone. And then she went like last week or something, she went to a, interview and so she said okay give me <laughs> she said give me a sign and the sign is going to be if this is the right job the sign is going to be a forget-me-not flower she goes in there the lady had a forget-me-not flower tattooed on her foot and so this stuff happens all the time <laughs> with people I work with and I love it and they text me or call me and I'm like I love it of us can do it so that's that was a question that i was i've, I've been wondering i was, yeah, was going to ask you how you've seen people change after receiving a reading and that's that's one amazing example and we had an interview a few episodes ago with a uh, touch healer howard chade and he talked about that how he loves skeptics because he just continues to do what what he does with the knowing that what he's doing is with full integrity how do you see people change when they come to, I mean, when we're talking about that, that path of personal growth and spirituality, it's, it's reassuring, I think, to hear stories from the field, from other people that are, that are having success with different modalities. Can you, can you share other stories? 
Right. Well, the people that I work with want change. That's one thing. And, and I also, I don't work with everybody. I really only work right. with people who, who are willing to, that, I guess the thing is that they really want change because if you don't want change, it's not going to happen. Right. Right. So I really am. Wait, can you, can you repeat that? That was so good. We're going to just repeat yeah, that hope, again. Hopefully you... <laughs> I can, but if, you know, if you don't want change, it's not going to happen. You're going to stay exactly where you are. And, and yeah. that's how, I mean, I'm very much, I will not, I won't waste my time with people who don't want to find peace or don't want some change in their life. I just won't. Um, and so the people that I do work with, and, and I'll tell you a little thing. I started, I don't know, a few years ago, and I gave it a month where I was just told people word of mouth, I'll do readings for free. And it was only for a month. And then I, and then like a month later, I set my website up and I, and I was charging money. So say that was four years ago. I still have the same clients I started with for free. Wow. And I, and it's most of my clients are word of mouth and I have them from all over. And it's just because, I don't know. I mean, I think people feel good when they talk with me. Why do you think that is? What, what is the internal process that you think is happening in that relationship that, that creates that, that feeling? I think part of it, honestly, is I think part of it is I share with them their potential. But you know what? On a little bit of a woo-woo scale here, I think part of it is that there is a change of energy. There's just like, you know, even if it's just like a tiny tiny little crack in where they were before and this different type of energy can come in and start and start changing how they think and how they feel and how they believe and then they always know if i'm working with people they know they can text me they can you know they can contact me if something's going on and we talk about it and and change really happens and that's that's what i love about it well, I love something you said in there because it's a it's 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 really part of what a lot of what this show is about is small small change. When I was doing therapy with clients or and working with people in that capacity, it's really important when you're staring down the paths of personal growth, personal development, to understand that change happens in increments, right? So, you know, first there has to arise in you a desire for change, yeah. but then there has to arise a reality that change happens in the context of living progress is often made in small ways and it's, it's sort of like being intuitive paying attention to small energy shifts yeah. paying attention to small changes in feelings paying attention to small signs those may not seem huge in the moment but they add up over time and you look back and you see profound change would you agree with absolutely. that absolutely and i think you know another thing that happens is you start becoming aware of who you feel better with you start becoming yeah. aware who you want in your life. And, and the yeah. other thing, like when I went through my transformation, it wasn't just me that changed because yeah, all of a sudden I changed dramatically, but it caused a major vibrational shift in our home and in our family. And so everybody in my family changed. And, and right. the, another thing that happens is, you, because you change so dramatically and you might not, you, you might, I mean, it might seem like slow, you know, the slow tur turning of the wheel for you, but during that one year, maybe all, you know, you're going to lose five people from your life that you didn't feel so good around. And maybe right. five more people that really support who you are come into your life. And it's like that change that really causes this stuff to stick. Can you take us back to that story? Because I think that's what you do is so interesting and how you got to what you do is just as interesting. What can you share with us about how this happened? Because I think, I think, you know, people tuning in may be thinking, you know, where is that entry point? And, and sometimes it's it, an entry point isn't something that we do. It's something that happens. And so can you take us back and, and kind of share with us that path, your, your path sure. that, that, that took you Absolutely. here? Absolutely. And I have to say, I had a few, like a few instances that happened before, but I wasn't, I wasn't really, I, I just like accepted it and didn't grab a hold of it and, and wasn't like, wow, this is really cool. I just took it, I'll just give you a quick example. Like when I was pregnant with our first one, first child, um, they were saying, you know, she might be non-compatible with life. They did an amnio. 
And I went home and I was like so sad laying in bed crying. And, and then I just, I heard, don't worry, she'll be okay. And I just felt this intense peace. And at, when you, when you say you yeah. heard it, how, how did it so come to I you? It was more like in my head hearing, but I was just like, don't worry, okay. she'll be okay. Or she'll be all right. Yeah. And so I, I felt peace and I knew she was going to be all right. And, but, but here's the thing. Don't you think most people, when they hear that, that would be like, Oh my God, that was like, hey, let me tell everybody. Right. I didn't tell anybody. I was just like, Oh, she's going to be all right. And I just carried on with life. It was just simple it truth. It was. And it was like, so that, anyhow, and I guess that's one of the things I still have about this is I'm like, I'm in awe of, of what we can do. I'm in total awe of it. But, um, but what happened to me when I was in my early forties, I was doing, um, a lot of running marathons with my husband and we had three kids and I was, you know, volunteering on the PTA doing, you know, checking off the boxes, but I, I dearly loved to run. That was like very fun for me. And we would travel out of state and I started, um, getting arrhythmias and I ignored that because I used to be a nurse and I was like, Oh, athletic women get arrhythmias, big deal. And then I started getting really tired and sometimes I'd feel like I was going to pass out. And so I was like, okay, here, the, the clincher for me was people started, the people that I used to run faster than started running faster than me. And so then I was like, okay, I've got to go to the doctor. So that's a sign. <laughs> that was it. And so I went to the doctor and it was like, at that point, the wheels fell off the bus and I ended up going out of state and I, and I was diagnosed with something that doesn't have like, I can't, it's like a um, circulatory thing. And it's not something that I can have surgery for and you know, it's just like, you know, I, there wasn't really a cure for it per se. So right. I went home and I was so tired and I just, I, I was in bed, like sleeping like two or three hours a day, but that sleeping became meditate, like a meditative thing. And I used, you know, for example, I know I listened to a lot of Jason Mraz, funny enough, but a lot of his songs are very yeah. spiritual. And I just right. ended up spending so much time in that kind of meditative state. And then all of a sudden, it was so weird. I started, you know, becoming aware of, of energy around me and and life was different. I was just like, it, everything changed for me. And then I was, and, and so then like every day after my kids went to school, I'd come home, I'd light a candle and I'd start meditating. And then I realized I could start channeling. And so it was just like, from that point on, it was, I never returned back. Like I changed so much. When you say change, what did change look like in your life? I think the biggest thing, okay. So one thing was just this undeniable faith, undeniable right. faith in something greater than myself, undeniable right. faith in something greater than what I see in front of me. Um, I really am. I have to say that I'm as much connected to what we don't see as I am to what we do see. Right. I, I just so much believe in, I'll use the words magic for life or magic in life, but it's, it's, it's that spirituality. It's, it's that knowing that we have so many gifts that we just have to say yes to. It's, it's just, there's so much available to us. How do we tap into that? If somebody listening is, is thinking to themselves, this sounds great. Yeah. And I'd really love to do this, but I have three rambunctious yeah. kids or a job I have to get to. What's a tip or tool from your experience as an intuitive that you can offer us that could help us start to identify or pinpoint these, these gifts, these things that are available up to us and how we can and start to access them. Okay. The first thing I, I really do believe is meditate or pray every day, because I think that that's a, a very important practice. Um, and I also believe that having some type of community is another thing is another very important practice. So community in the sense that has, um, a spiritual community, people that understand what you're talking about. That is it's really important because the more you immerse yourself in this type of lifestyle, the more your life is going to change. Right. And um, so community, meditation, 
And I also believe if you have the opportunity to go and and be with, you know, I, I'm not somebody that thinks that there's one guru out there. I'm not that way at all. Right. But I do believe if you have the opportunity to go hear, um, you know, find a speaker that you really resonate with and, and are in that energy, being in the presence of that energy really does help. But then staying involved in a community keeps it going. What have been some influential teachings that you've heard or some, some inspirational books that you could share? Does anything really stand out to you in that area? Um, you know, I like, um, I do, for this simplistic, I really do like Sunny Don Johnson. Because, and she's like, okay. I actually do have, um, I have seen her speak and I love her. And I actually have um, a lot of my clients, I, ha I have her, I refer her books to them. Um, I think boring right. virtues really easy also. Um, and then energy wise, um, I really like Panage the Sai. And it's not so much the words. I I've seen him speak twice and it's not so much the words as the energy. And I'm really I I have to say that I am picky about when I go to certain events because it it has to feel right to me and it also like like sometimes um I guess just do your homework the key is make sure you feel good about what you're you're listening to that's a huge piece of advice because people will ask me questions all the time about finding counselors finding therapists finding people in the spiritual community and my my answer is usually a variation of that theme which is look before you go to any type of practitioner or whatever it's always good to have a referral or it's good to sit with that and see how it feels to yeah. you because look, that's not saying that some people are better than others. It's some people are a better fit. Yes. And I think, you know, we, we take that for granted when we're picking a favorite restaurant or we're, we're entering a relationship. You know, we're very willing to accept the idea of, of taste and fit. But I think sometimes on this path, sometimes we just will we'll pick up any book. You know, we'll just go to the bookstore and take any book. And that can be valuable to a point. But I think your point is well taken is, see if that energy is a good match. See, read a few messages and see if they resonate with you. Right, because I have to say that I have met people that are amazingly connected. I mean, they can intuitively, they are amazingly connected. But where they are in this life in terms of um, creating a life of peace is a flipping disaster. And so if you, through, and then if you spend time with them, you're like, opening the door to a whole bunch of chaos. I was yeah. just thinking chaos when you said the word chaos. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it does. I mean, it's, it's got to be that feel-good energy. When you say grounded, that's a word I want to pick up on. What, what does staying grounded mean to you? Because you spend a lot of your work time in higher, higher vibrations. And I think one of the practical things that we want to get across on this show is that the events of your everyday life, that's where change is found. So one way to access that power is to stay grounded and stay aware, stay mindful in your day. When you say grounded, what are, what are you talking about? How does grounded look and feel to you? So for me, grounded feels like I'm totally comfortable with where I'm at. And it's just like, it's just like, this is where I'm at and I'm totally okay with it. And, and probably it's even a little bit of me stepping back and observing. And I think that you know, that brings up the point of like parenting because my husband and I have three kids. It's easier for me to step back and be like and observe than for him. But it is easier for me because I think I think that's part of why we're here. To observe? To observe. I mean, we're, obviously, if you've got kids, you love your, you know, you can't always just observe. But it is easier to say, okay, this is what's going on. I don't have to react. That's a great point. So much of growth, so much of the things we talk about are tools that help you not be so reactive, to be more, uh, like you said, observational to an angry coworker, a screaming child behind you on the airplane yeah. on your business trip. The keys to overcoming the frustration and impatience that can come with those situations really does lie a lot of times in patience and learning to be less reactive. Yeah. And, but I'll, I will be honest with you. I'm not always calm, cool and collected. And that's when my kids say, 
that's not very life coach like of you. Right. (laughs) I want to just tell every listener now, just because you tell people you're on a path of personal growth and spirituality, if anything, you might become more irritable because you are very, very now aware of when you start to become very aware of when you're being knocked off center. And that can add fuel to the fire. Sometimes you don't have to be perfect. On no. And you know what? You're not going to be. Right. And it's okay. It's okay. I mean, that's the thing is like, I pretty much tell people I'm like the 70% girl because I'm like, I'm essentially lazy. I let things come. To me. <laughs> and I, it's true though. There are many things I'm just not going to get upset about. Some people say, oh, you, you, you've become a lot more distant lately. No, I'm just a lot more reserved. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. Pay attention to where you feel good. Yeah. And you, I mean, that's the bottom line is you pay attention to where you feel good. Pay attention to the people that make you feel good. And the rest of it, let it go. It, well, I love it. It's absolute truth. I love it. What a powerful, powerful way to close this episode. Polly, I just thank you so much. I just really appreciate your time. So as we close this episode, I want you to expand your mind as far as you can. Then I want you to expand it further. Whether or not you've experienced an intuitive reading, listen to your feelings, listen to your intuition, see where it leads. So I'd like to once again thank our guest, Polly Wyram, for joining us. You can find out more about her at gatewaystopeace.com. That's gateways, the number two, peace.com. There's interesting information there. And she does weekly energy readings that are really interesting and and very much worth your time. The link will be in our show notes at nobodysview.com. And remember, you can always find out more about what we're doing at nobodysview.com or the nobodybible.com. Or you can reach out to us on Twitter and Facebook at Nobody's View. If you like what you hear, please consider a review or a subscription. We'd appreciate it. Keep practicing and have a good week.